my channel, Edible Thoughts Makes. My name is Stephanie, um, and today we're doing something a little bit different. So typically we go through like a vlog in the beginning from the last time we recorded. We chit chat for a little bit, always about the weather and just life stuff. And then we usually go into finished projects, works in progress, things I've been cooking and um, any books I've been reading. And then usually something that might've been on my mind since the last time we chatted. Well, I decided, and I'm not sure yet if this is something I'm committing to. Um, I guess some of it just depends on interest, whether I feel like it, if there's time for it. But I have been thinking about this for a little while. Um, maybe, I don't know if you'd call it a series. That seems a little too, uh, too high of a commitment to call it a series because that would mean there would have to be multiple of them. But I decided to call it Maker Musings. And basically, if there are some maybe frequently asked questions or things that I find might be easy to reference to, like for a specific episode, especially if it's a question that's asked pretty often, um, then it's answered somewhere separately from like a longer episode and hopefully easier to find. My thought is to have these episodes be minimally um, edited so saving time on my end, um, more of a casual sit and make type of thing and answering the questions and then also maybe some tips and tricks on things, um, but limit it to maybe like three-ish topics. Um, they may be related, they may not be, um, but also just to keep it short and simple and uh, yeah, casual. So we will see how this goes. I'm not sure if this is gonna continue, how often it'll be, anything like that. Maybe it's a once a month thing, I don't really know. I don't really wanna cap it at anything and make it super, I don't know what the word is, um, super formal is not the word I'm looking for, but I just don't want it to be uh, restrictive in any way to say, oh, this is like a midweek thing, or this is a once a month thing, or this is a always just a 30 minute thing. Um, because it might not be, and uh, yeah, so we'll see. My disclaimer is, this is just what works for me and what I can share with you from my experience. It is never a, you know, this is how you have to do it, or this is how it's always done, or there's a right or wrong answer. It is never like that. Um, it is always just what works for me, what I've been doing, and, um, and that may also change. So I feel like sometimes, I don't know, I don't know if everybody feels this way, but I feel like sometimes it seems as if once we say something, it has to always be that way. And that's totally not true because we're always learning and growing and changing our minds. And our situations may change over time and circumstances may change. And so we change our minds on things. And um, yeah, so I, I never want it to come across as like this is the end all be all and this is how it always is because that's the, just, isn't human <laughs> um, and that just isn't how life goes. So with that said, um, let's just jump right into it. I am knitting on my half and half triangles wrap. I'm not gonna talk about it in detail because that's not the point of these. Um, you can check back on previous episodes to learn more about this project if you would like. Uh, I am drinking an herbal uh, rooibos tea that's pumpkin spice. Oh, it smells so good. It's a little hot right now, so it's just gonna sit here. Um, and I am wearing my fall frolic sweater that's designed by Samantha Guerin, and I test knit this for her, I believe it was fall of 2022. And right now it is February, 2023. So, Let's get with the questions. I have three written down, and the first one is on project bags. So if you've been watching for a while, um, you may know that I sew. I have been sewing since I was a little kid. My mom sews, my grandma sews. In fact, my maternal grandmother um, used to teach sewing out of her home, and my mom remembers just like running around around the tables and things like that. and. 
um, while my grandma or her mom would be teaching classes and this is in Taiwan and my grandmother I call her Ama which is grandmother in Taiwanese but yeah so I've been sewing since I was a little kid my mother-in-law also sews and so yeah sewing is just kind of an all the time not all the time uh, a life skill <laughs> I don't know what to say uh, Sewing is just something that's part of my life. There you go. That's what I meant to say. Um, but yes, so about project bags, I do not sell them. I make them for personal use. I do not follow a tutorial. I do not follow a pattern, nor will I be writing anything about a tutorial or a pattern. I feel like some people ask for them, but they don't realize how much work goes behind that. And plus, since I never really make the exact same bag twice, nor do I want to, Writing up a tutorial or pattern just seems like a big headache. There's no way I'm doing that. And so, <laughs> if you're interested in sewing your own project bag, I recommend Google and YouTube. There are tons of different tutorials out there and patterns free or paid for. And so I just recommend you sifting through it and doing your own research because there's lots of stuff out there. If that's not the best way you learn, I recommend you going to your local fabric shop and or local um there's usually like sewing shops that have um, offer classes or maybe if you want to get to know your machine better you can bring in your machine and they can teach you how to use it those are great resources for you to go to now as far as fabrics the um i had a question about you know where do i find my fabrics do i keep them all over time so i have amassed not a ton of fabric, but you know, some fabric over the decades. And I will say I usually don't purchase a lot, like quantity wise, because you can actually make quite a bit with a small amount of fabric. And by small, I mean like a yard or less. I think in the beginning, I, I didn't quite understand how much I needed for any project. And so I feel like I wasn't buying as purposely, or I guess as economically for whatever project I would say oh that fabric's so pretty and then I would get like a yard or two not really knowing what I was doing with that and um, yeah I feel like two yards is kind of a lot it's different if you're gonna make garments I don't usually make garments I make skirts and stuff but um, they don't usually take that much fabric uh, maybe a couple yards at most and so as far as project bag goes under a yard is plenty in fact I like to use fat quarters because I feel like it sets myself up to use it all. I can use it all at once and also have like an accent fabric that I can pair it with. And then I like my bags generally to have a boxed bottom and something that can help make that sturdier is using denim or canvas. And I also use interfacing. So fusible fleece interfacing can make it kind of cushy but also sturdier and then if my lining fabric usually I just use like a broadcloth like a cotton muslin fabric or something like that or quilters cotton um, if it's too flimsy I can add another piece of interfacing to that and use like a lightweight or medium uh, interfacing to it so that there will be two layers of interfacing inside now if I want my fabric or my bag to end up being more squishable and not so sturdy, I will use like quilting, uh, quilt batting instead of um, the fusible fleece or some other uh, thinner interfacing. As far as where I get my fabrics, a lot of times it's Joann's and they often have coupons and discounts and clearances, especially post holiday-ish or after seasons and some of the fabrics I don't even feel like are that seasonal so that can be um, great to shop for that I also really enjoy remnant bins at fabric stores because those are heavily discounted and usually end of bolt and so they're all under a yard and that's oftentimes all I need is under a yard anyway and so I will often collect fabrics that I know I can use from that so that might be canvas or denim which tend to be at higher price points, but they are at great price points when they are remnants. Or also like uh, for linings of bags, uh, you can usually find like the solid quilters cotton or muslin type of fabrics um, that are unbleached or natural looking um, in the remnant bins. 
Another place is Michael's, which is an arts and crafts store. Oh, and I'm based in the U.S. here, so the stores that I'm talking about are U.S. based. Um, Michael's often has fabrics that are pre-cut, so you'll find like one yard. I don't remember if they have two yards, and then they have fat quarters, and sometimes they have fat quarter bundles and smaller bundles too. I can't remember what size the fabric is. Might be 10 inches, 10 by 10 or something. And so they have some bundles already preset or pre-cut for you and um, matched up. So those are also places you can look and they often have coupons as well that you can use for those. Spoonflower is an online company where you can support other artists and their designs by selecting specifically what kind of fabric you want their design printed on. And Spoonflower often has 50% off fat quarter sales and so I'll take advantage of those to kind of try out different designs and see what I like and I can usually get two little bags out of a fat quarter of course using other fabrics as well but as an accent piece um, I can use that and make like a bigger bag and then a smaller bag. Of course it depends on how much of the accent other colors I want to use or how much like patchworking I want to do or things like that but I feel like that's also a great place to try things out. And then if you have any local fabric stores by you they often will carry more um, I don't know if it's name brand fabrics or trendier fabrics uh, different what would you call it what would you call like a fabric designer company designer fabrics I don't I don't really know what you would call it but they'll often carry like rifle paper Tula pink Robert Kaufman linens Moda um, Ruby Star Society Dear Stella so a bunch of other I don't know do you call them designer fabrics but yeah, those are also places you can look if you have that accessible to you. Okay, not too hot now. Next question that I want to answer today is about picking projects. I had a question about um, how do I pick my next project? <laughs> now, I have a long for my projects and I whittled it down because you know tastes change ideas change and yarns that were previously assigned to some projects might have gotten reassigned to other projects and so things are constantly kind of moving around and that's totally okay because it's my cue I can do what I want with it um, but oftentimes when I'm picking projects it's based on just my mood, how I'm feeling. I might be looking in my closet, my wardrobe to see what I'm missing, what I feel like I um, need or want. And sometimes that's based on color, like, oh, I'm, I'm feeling like I need something olive or I need something gray or I need something neon coral or whatever the case may be. Um, yeah, and so I'll be assessing that and then I'll assess what yarn I have on hand and look at projects and say, okay, you know, can I make this off of something I have? And if not, how do I make that happen? Do I need to marl yarns together? Do I need to hold things double, triple? Do I, do I need to get creative? Like maybe I can make that, but it will be three quarter length sleeves or maybe I can make that, but it'll be cropped or whatever, whatever it is. And if I have to make those adjustments, does it still, fill the need of what I initially wanted, well, what I wanted in the first place. So that's what I think about when I am picking my projects. And then I'm also looking at the pattern itself. For me, it's important for it to be size inclusive. And so I look at the pattern range, um, the smallest size offered, the largest size offered, maybe how many inches are between each of the sizes, uh, more so just, you know, to be aware, like, is it, is it possible for me to make this in whatever size I'm looking for with the intended um, ease that it's meant for? And if not, you know, how am I going to change it to make it work for me? Is it still worth it to me to do that or not? Um, none of this is necessarily in some sort of, like, ranked priority order or anything like that. It's more so just factors that I think about 
when I am deciding on projects. Um, I also really like to use things that I've already made. So I will look at patterns I've already made because I know what that process will be like and then think, okay, can I modify that to make what I want? Um, because A, I already have the pattern, so I've already bought it. And B, I've already made it once, so I know what the process is like and it'll go smoother, right? I'm, it's not, I'm not relearning anything and I can then make it how I want to. So I think those are all the, yeah, those are, those are all the thoughts in general that I think about, or maybe not in general, in detail, <laughs> that I think about when I'm picking a project. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. And this one had to do with outerwear. So talking about like cold weather and wearing coats and jackets and things like that and how that fits in with our knitwear. So I don't have any specific brand. I, can't, I couldn't recommend you anything exactly. Um, I think my winter coats, I'm pretty sure most of them have actually been gifted from my mom and she'll often shop at like Marshalls or yeah, places like that, which then end up with like a bunch of random stuff. And so my winter coats, I feel like, I don't think any of them have Velcro. So that's something definitely I feel like to look for because if you have Velcro, it will stick to your knits and snag them. And so that's kind of annoying. Something I think I would do differently or look for differently, and I've had my the coats that I've had currently for like definitely over five years, but if the time came where I needed to shop for a new one, I think I would look for something that had wider or a deeper, would you call it a deeper yoke for a jacket? I guess so. I mean, that's what I'm thinking of. I, I want something with a bigger armhole because I just really don't like bunchiness. And I've talked about this in previous like full on episodes, but some sweaters have deeper yokes. And then when you try to put on a winter coat, it just bunches all up in the armpit area and it's really not comfortable. So I feel like a winter coat, I would want something that had a deeper yoke or a bigger armhole so that it's easier to shove my arm in and be wearing sweaters and like not be like all bunched up and feel stuck. Um, but yeah, I feel like that, I, again, I don't have any specific brands or anything like that to recommend. That's just what I would look for. So no Velcro, deeper yoke. Oh, the other thing, a hood. I like a deep hood that stays on for my coats. I mean, wind chill is brutal. And so inside I'll still wear another hat and I need that hood to be able to fit securely over that hat and not fly off when it's windy. I really don't like wind in my ears and so I will always have a hat on and then I'll put the hood on for like extra um, wind protection. And so the hood has to be deep enough. Like ideally it comes a little bit down over a forehead. I feel like when it just sits on top, it just blows right off. So it has to be deep enough that it'll stay on. Um, so yeah, those are my criteria for out outerwear. Obviously it has to be warm, but yeah, deep yoke, no Velcro and a good hood. Yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> so yeah, I think those are the those are the three topics for today. Uh, project bags and fabric, uh, picking projects, and outerwear. I hope that this little episode was enjoyable for you and that maybe you learned something new. Uh, and if you didn't, that, that's okay too. I just hope that you had a good time chatting and you are welcome to throw in your musings in the description, not in the description box, in the comments below this video. So until next time, oops, let me get my tea. So until next time, cheers to being creative and I will talk to you later.